if you're like me, you've got a lot of brushless DC motors that need to be rewound. One of the most important tools is a pair of glasses so that we can see what we're doing because this is pretty tedious work. So let's start with uh, one of these motors that I actually burned up and we'll start by removing the circlip and we'll be very careful not to lose any of these parts and we'll take the motor apart just by pulling like that. We've got uh, uh, bearing on the front and the back to make it a little easier to hold on to this motor when we do the rewind. Let's put on uh, a 440 screw through the middle of it and something like that. And another useful thing is to measure the wire which we will do with a micrometer and the micrometer says that it's 0.185 or 0 0.0185 inches. We can look that up and we got to allow a little bit for the fact that there's some insulation on it, but that's a number 26AWG. Let's count the number of winds on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and there was thirteen winds on there. So it's nice to know that we got a thirteen wind 26AWG motor. It's got twelve stator poles, so that means each phase is going to have to wind around four of those poles. Got the stator all ready to go. I've cut off about 40 inches or a little extra of wire. And here we go. We're going to pick the first pole and we're going to make one wind around it, just like that. That's one wind. So when I make a wind, I'm going to move my pistachio from one can to the other. By the way, I'm going to go wild and crazy. Rather than using 13 winds with number 26 AWG, I'm going to do a 12 wind around each pole with 24, a little heavier wire. So I should have a little more copper on this, but it's going to be a tight fit. So we'll see if it works out. Probably have a little better luck rotating the motor rather than twisting the wire around these poles. And we'll keep using our thumb to keep that wire on there as tight as we can. I'm going to pull it pretty tight, but not so tight that we're stripping the insulation off the wire. Okay, here's my first pole half wound. I've gone from inboard to outboard, and as you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven winds, and I should have seven pistachios in my new cup at this point. Then we're going to wind back down to the middle, so I need to get five more winds to get my 12 turns in. Now I've wound back in toward the center of the pole, and I got my five additional turns on there. One, two, three, four, and five. Now remember, this is a three-phase motor, so I'm going to have to skip a couple of teeth to allow room for my other phases. So we're going to go to the 90 degree point. I'm going to skip two poles. So I'm going to bring the wire over to here. See how we skipped two poles? And we're going to start winding this one. And we're going to do the, the same technique that we did on the previous pole. Now I've finished phase A, wrapping all four poles. So I started here, little a, I skipped two poles, I wound this pole, skipped two, round that pole, skipped two, and round this pole, that's the fourth pole, and that's where I ended, so I'll call that big A. So that's a, phase A is complete. Now I want to start phase B. But I have to be careful where my start and end leads are going to come up because I want them evenly spaced around this motor. So 
if we started with little a and we ended up back at big A, we'll want to start, little b will start way over here and it'll end up back here. And then our two wire leads will not overlap the phase A wire leads. And by the way, I'm going to leave the long lead is going to go to the electronic speed control and the little short guys are all going to be just tied all together. So let's start out with phase B. I've cut off another wire and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get this guy off of there. I'm going to loop this over my little uh, 440 screw that I put down through the middle of the motor. And we're going to start with a little B and we're going to start again going in the same direction, always clockwise. So here we go. And again, it's easier to spin the motor, flip the motor over than it is to twist the wire, I think. 